What if you were stuck alone on an island, and it happened to have a racetrack, and they couldn't save you from the island, but you can have a couple cars shipped to you, and you had to spend the rest of your life on the island with those cars? What cars would you pick? What cars would you have shipped to you, and then that's it. You have to spend the rest of your life with them. Now, to some of you, I'm sure this might be an easy question. I'm sure there's going to be some people in the comments. Dude, this question's hella easy, bro. Mark IV Supra, bro. R34, bro. Easy question, man. Move on. Okay, think about it. For the rest of your life, you got to drive these cars. Now, I love my car. I love my Mustang. I love the horsepower it has. But I would not want to be stuck with that car and only that car for the rest of my life. It just, I'd get annoyed of it, okay? It can't do things other cars can. Even though it's fast, it's not going to handle like a brand new, I don't know, GTR or BMW. It's not going to handle like that. So think about it. Now, what I did is I, I, well, I picked five cars and then I failed and had to pick, I think, six because I wanted to include a car from different categories. So I have an exotic car picked, a classic car picked, a muscle car picked, a modern one, a JDM car picked, a truck, and a sports sedan. So I picked a handful of cars that if I was stuck on an island with, I would not mind living the rest of my life with these cars. Now, I don't own these cars. So I don't have footage of these cars. So I went and, uh, well, I got them on Forza. So just enjoy the shitty driving from me. I don't play Forza too much, as you can tell. And, uh, well, let's start with the exotic first. So the exotic car. A few of you are probably like, oh, dude, it'd be great to own like a Lamborghini Aventador or a Lamborghini Huracan or a Murcielago or something like that. Nice cars. But the one exotic car that I've always had my eyes on is the 2015 Porsche 918 Spider. This one was one of the easiest categories to select for the exotic cars. I'm not a huge exotic car guy, but the Porsche 918 Spider is one of the sexiest exotic cars I have ever seen. There are a good amount of good looking cars. I mean, the McLaren Senna, beautiful car. But the 918 Spider, I mean, 887 horsepower from factory and just look at that. I mean, it just screams luxury and it just screams elegance. It's it's a beautiful car and it wasn't this this one was probably the easiest one to pick because with all of the other cars, I've had experience with with some of the other cars that I chose and some of the other contenders. I've had some experience with them. So, this is kind of just what I've seen and a Porsche 918 Spider to me is the ideal exotic car. It looks exotic but it's not too crazy in your face like a Lamborghini. And I mean, it has the same engine size as my Mustang right now, a 4.6 V8, come on. <laughs> the interior of these is beautiful. Doug DeMiro, he did a review on one a long time ago, and that was the first time I actually looked in depth into this car, and it just it's, it's a crazy, beautiful car. And like I said, one of the easiest ones to pick, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this car, because I don't, I, don't, I don't need to ramble on about this car. It's not a car I'm ever going to own, so who cares? Let's move on to a classic car. Now, for me, I stuck with American Muscle because that's what I enjoy more. And I chose a 1973 Chevy Nova SS. Now, I don't know if I'm allowed on this fake island to swap the motor or modify my cars. But so for now, we'll just stick with the Chevy Nova SS. I used to have an Oldsmobile Omega, which is pretty much a Nova. It's the same shit. It's just made by Oldsmobile instead. It had a Chevy motor in it, but I never got it to run. Sadly, I had it for maybe six months, maybe a year, if that. And while I had it, I was also saving up, and that's when I bought the Mustang that I own now, and I sold it, and I wish I didn't because I think now with the knowledge that I have, I think I'd be able to get it to somewhat run. I mean, it was a project and a half it had really minimal interior and what it did have was just destroyed there were holes in the floor pans it, it needed someone that really knew what they were doing but chevy nova ss i know some of you might say a chevelle or a classic mustang would probably fit me or you know why, why the grandma car i mean it's just a nova if we just go with the chevelle or the camaro but personally i think maybe it's just because i used to own one of these that I just want one and I want to just make it the way I pictured it back when I bought that car originally. I'm sure some of you have some sentimental value like that, but also the Nova generation before that, that is just some gangster ass muscle car right there. I'll throw in a picture right here, but 1962 to 1967 Nova's beautiful. Just look at that. That just screams gangster. But yeah, if I had to choose a classic car, I think I would stick with the Nova SS. All right, moving to modern muscle. This one, again, surprisingly, wasn't that easy to choose. I was bouncing a couple cars around in my head and I had to narrow it down and it was between the ZL1, 
the brand new 2019 or 2018 i guess i don't really care the redesign isn't that crazy to me but the the 2016 and up camaro zl1 compared to a 2014 shelby gt500 and i think i had to stick with my guns and stick with the shelby I love Mustangs, and I think the 2014 Shelby GT500 is one of the best-looking Mustangs to come out, especially in modern times. Modern Mustangs, I mean, the new edges looked pretty good. The S197s that I own, the earlier generations, they're ass ugly unless you do some crazy shit to them, like a wide body kit or you change out the front bumper. I think they just look basic. I get what they were going for. They were going with the retro styling, but they are just bland. The 2010s. Eh, they kind of shot up into the air and didn't hit shit with that one. 2011s to 2012s, those were starting to look okay. 2013, 2014 knocked it out of the park. They really, really fine-tuned that car and really made it just look beautiful. It is a great-looking Mustang. It is going to stick around for with a lot of people probably until the day they die. Just because when people think Mustang, they're going to think of that car when they were growing up. And then they're going to want to own that car. When they do grow up and they, they want to you know relive their youth, 2014s, 2013s, that's going to be the car. I'm telling you. Now, the 2014 Shelby GT500 is no super powerful you know beast. I, I'm, the car I own now is faster than one. But uh, 662 horsepower is still no slouch for sure. And, I mean, if you already have the Porsche, I mean, this is this beautiful sounding 5.8 liter V8. Why not? Why not? Everyone loves hearing a little whiny supercharger too. What? I could hear that. I could hear that now. Not too much though. This see, this is why I said you can't just have one car. You got you got to have a couple cars to juggle around with because just one car, it's gonna get old pretty quick. But if I have this, I have the Porsche, I have the Nova. So far, so good. And uh, like I said, just based on looks, the Shelby GT500 is beautiful. Moving on to the JDM car. This one again. This one surprisingly was one of the harder ones to pick. I, I don't know why. Uh, I, maybe it's because I'm not a huge JDM fan. I like JDM cars to an extent, but um, I'm not someone that really goes crazy overseeing a JDM car out in the public. Uh, but this one, I was bouncing around between an FD RX-7 and the R35. And I was thinking if I was stuck with a track, what car would I rather have? And I went with the R35. If I was stuck somewhere, I already have the fast cars. I already have the uh, really bad handling cars such as the Nova and the GT500. So let me get something that can handle. Doesn't have you know a stupid amount of horsepower, but it's still fast. Uh, dual clutch, about 600 horsepower, twin turbo V6. Does it's not so bad, you know. Four seats too. If I'm stuck there with any friends, we could we can go and I don't know, drive in circles for fun. The R35 is well you know, most of you guys know what an r35 is i don't really got to spend too much time on this car but it is a good car you guys know it's a good car it's a very good looking car too but i mean besides that the modern jdm cars there's not many good contenders i mean what an nsx no one really wants that the new supra eh, i don't know i mean if i could mod it i guess but i don't want the new bmw supra no one wants that classic jdm cars are cool and all but Compared to modern day cars, they're not that fast. Again, yes, you can go and make your Mark IV Super a thousand horsepower, yeah, but I'm trying to keep these cars stock on this fictional island. It's all fictional, okay? Let me just have this. Let me just have this. If I was stuck by myself, let me just enjoy myself, okay? That would be my JDM car for sure. Um, and even even in real life, I mean, if I had to pick a JDM car to own, I mean, shit, might as well go with an R35, right? Top dog in, in Japan, Godzilla, come on. All right, the next vehicle is actually a truck, and I actually changed my mind like last second. The first and original pick I had chosen was the Dodge Ram SRT10, and I think this is a very badass truck. I mean, a V10 in a truck. That's, that's like unheard of. That's badass. For sure, a crazy car, but then I thought about it. My lineup was already very power-oriented and very track oriented and I wanted something to kind of change it up. I didn't want to just go, okay, fast car, fast car, fast car, slow car, GTR, fast car. And I, I didn't want to just do that. So I changed my mind and I went with the 6.2 liter Ford Raptor. Now this compared to the newer generation Raptor, I think the newer generation Raptor looks 10 times better on the exterior, probably on the interior too. But the, the 6.2, I mean, you can't go wrong. It doesn't have that much less horsepower, 411 compared to 450 it's not that much less and you get that beautiful sound and like i said if modding is available then sure on this fictional island let's toss a whipple up on there and let's make that 411 i don't know let's make that 550 600 on a truck 
that's pretty great. Some other contenders were the Ford Lightning again, but it's like I didn't want another very performance oriented truck. The newer Toyota Tacomas or even the last gens, nice trucks for sure. Nice small mid sized trucks. Chevy trucks, eh, not really feeling it. I worked at Chevy and they were okay, but they weren't anything special. Chevy is really missing out with like the sports car market. They have the Corvette and the Camaro, and then they have cars that they claim are sporty, like like the Sonic RS and shit, or like the Cruise RS. No, no, they're not. They're really not. They need to make the Silverado SS again, and they should make an Impala SS or a Malibu SS. I know they're discontinuing a bunch of cars, and I forgot if they're discon... I think they are. I think they're discontinuing the Malibu for some fucking reason. But they're keeping the Cruise, or one or the other. They're getting rid of one of them. I don't know. Get rid of the Cruise. It's a piece of shit. But anyway, the 6.2 liter Raptor, I mean, come on. It's a great sounding truck. It's a powerful truck, and you don't really need much else in a truck. All right, the last vehicle is a sports sedan, and this one actually might surprise you guys. I was thinking about the Dodge Hellcat, and then I was like, nope, I already got too many very fast performance-oriented cars. Let's kick that one to the curb. Chevy SS sedan. That's actually one of my dream cars. It's a beautiful car. That is a badass sleeper, just like family car. If you guys don't know what it is, go look at it. The Alfa Romero Giulia Quadra... Well, you, you guys know that, that crazy mouthful of a car. Also very badass and the Kia Stinger. Those were the top four contenders and the one I went with was the Kia Stinger. Surprisingly, I know, and there's someone in the comments. Drew, why didn't you pick the BMW M3? No, I don't want a BMW M3. They sound like dog shit. <laughs> now, I don't know if the Kia Stinger would sound much better. I haven't heard many modified Kia Stingers in person, but I've heard a lot of dog shit sounding M3s, so it can't be as bad as that. Now the Kia Stinger, we're going to talk about the GT model, uh, they also do have a GT all-wheel drive sedan, but we're just going to talk with the GT model. The Kia Stinger comes with 365 horsepower, and the MSRP on one of them is about $39,000, which is a hefty price for a Kia, but what you're getting is pretty solid. You're getting a 3.3 liter twin-turboed V6, and you're also getting a luxury sedan sports car. Now again, it's a Kia. It's probably not going to be as luxurious as a Beamer or a Mercedes or an Audi. But personally, I think the price kind of helps justify that. If you're going to go and get the new BMW M3, you're going to pay a lot more than you would for a Kia Stinger. And you're getting pretty equal shit. Say you want to get yourself a 2018 BMW M3 automatic sedan, just the base model one, nothing super crazy. It's going to cost you $70,000 and you're only getting 425 horsepower out of the six cylinder that it comes with. That's not that far off from the Kia Stinger. Now I will say the Kia Stinger isn't anything super beautiful and super elegant to look at, but it's a nice change up between the BMWs and the Mercedes that you see that all kind of just blend together. The Kia Stinger does stand out. Every BMW pretty much out there looks the same. A lot of the Mercedes looks the same. A lot of the Audis look the same. The Kia Stinger, different. And I'm not a huge fan of sports sedans anyway. I mean, of course, if I have a family one day, it'd be cool to get one, but I would probably still lean towards the Chevy SS just because I like V8. But on this fictional island, to change it up a little bit, I think the Kia Stinger would be a good change up from all of the high horsepower V8s that, well, I've picked so far. Anyway, it's just my fictional list if I ever get stuck on this fictional island, and I'm sure we all are different, and maybe a lot of you guys would stick with just only Nissans or maybe stick with only JDM cars, but again, we're all different. If you want to go ahead and let me know what your list would be in the comments feel free to do so and uh, let's see i'm curious to think what you guys would pick as your guys's lineup so let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this video please give a thumbs up and uh well until next video peace